afternoon. Good afternoon. Ayan. Hindi <laughs> pa rin ako okay, sir. Eh. Uh, matindi pa rin yung asthma attack ko. So, <clears throat> si ano muna, si Kat ulit muna. Okay. Ang mag-preside. Ayan. Naka, oh, naka, may mga participants na tayo online. Hello po sa lahat. Good afternoon. Ma'am Kat. Ayan, meron na. Hello, good afternoon po. Yes. Good afternoon po sa seven participants. Yes. Uh, good afternoon, Sir Francis, Sir Ardo, Gideon, uh, si Sir Luisito, Marceline, and Sir Randy. Early bird po. Sino pinakauna? May point yan eh. May point. Ang pinakauna. Ang pinakauna si Sir Francis Codelia. Uh, congratulations, Sir. Ano mo papanalunan, uh, by the way? T-shirt ano po ang... ni Take Mill. <laughs> ah. Just like what I'm wearing po. <laughs> Yan. Hello. Good afternoon, Sir Randy, Sir Luisito, and Sir Francis. Hello po, kamusta po ang ating weekend? Kamusta po ang uh, long vacation? Hello po sa lahat ng participants, sa ating uh, 10 attendees na po. So pwede nyo pong i-send uh, po yung link ng ating webinar sa mga kakilala po nila para po maka-attend po sila ng ating webinar for today. Good afternoon po sa mga bagong dating kay Ma'am Marceline. Good afternoon po. And jury. Good afternoon po. Yes, hello po Sir Gerardo. Opo. Yes, if ever na you have questions or concerns po or mga questions po, uh, pwede nyo naman pong i-type na po. Ma'am, yung request na webinar, wala pa po akong nare-receive sa email. Sir, yung ating webinar po kasi na copy, uh, it will be sent after po ng lahat ng webinar. So it will be sent all. Yung lahat na po ng copy, isa-send po yan sa inyo. Okay, Sir Luis Rito. Yes po. Good afternoon, Ma'am Marceline. Hello, good afternoon po sa lahat. You can send our link po dun sa ating, uh, ng ating webinar sa mga kakilala po nila. So, para po makapasok na din po sila ngayon. Ano yung topic natin? Ay, sir, ay uh, technical analysis yung alam kong topic for today. Okay, sige. Thank you. Kahit naman anong topic, sir, alam kong kaya mo eh. <laughs> Yan. Good afternoon po. So, uh, 5.55 pa lang. So, uh, siguro yung iba pa open pa lang since 6 nga yung nakalagay sa ating, uh, uh, sa ating uh, na-start ng ating webinar. So, if ever, we will proceed our uh, webinar or we will start at 6.10. Opo. Kamusta na po ang ating, uh, ang ating uh, holiday ngayon, di ba, Sir Nathan? Yes, it is a holiday. Hanggang yes, o ka, opo. Kamusta na po yung uh, ating mga ano, ang ating uh, holiday. Last day na ng holiday ngayon, so tomorrow po back to normal. <laughs> yes, hello po sa mga uh, mayroon na tayong 12 uh, attendees. So, hello, Sir Roberto. Hello, Sir Roberto. Hello po sa mga bagong dating. Hi, Ni. Hello po. 
Yes po, pakisan nyo lang po tong link sa ating uh, ng webinar natin para po maka-attend din po yung iba na interested po na umaten. I ano ko po, isan ko po dito yung link. Ayan po yung link ng ating webinar so you can send it to uh, to to your friends na interested po to attend our webinar. So nag-paste po ako dito sa ating chat uh, webinar chat ng uh, link. Hello po sa ating mga attendees. So meron na po tayong 15 Ayan, meron na tayong 14. Hello, Sir Kenneth. Hello po sa mga bagong pasok. Good afternoon po sa inyong lahat. Hello, Sir Roberto. Message lang po kayo kung meron po silang mga tanong. At least bago po tayo mag-start, may mga question po sila last time. At least bago tayo mag-start, matakel po natin. While we are waiting for others po to join. Yan po. So yung mga gagawa po ng account sa so mga gustong gumawa po ng account, uh, isend ko din po dito wait, yung link para if ever wait. If, i-paste ko dito yung link how to create an account. Ayan. Ito po ang ating uh, link po kung paano po mag-create ng uh, yung kung saan po sila magka-create ng account. So for demo account, I will be pay up. Ayan. 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 For the demo account po, yan. So if ever gusto po nilang itry yung ating welcome account, so isesend ko din po dito yung ating link for that. Ayan. Yeah. And you can contact me on my Facebook po if ever na na yun po. Pero I will be attending nyo, uh, yung uh, kanilang uh, wait. Naka-webinar ako.
Yan. Diyan nyo po ako makakontact sa aking Facebook po. So, click nyo lang yung link. If ever na may mga tanong po sila, uh, you can message me directly po sa aking Facebook. Good evening, Ma'am Lolita. Yes. Good evening, Sir Marco. Hello, good evening po. Uh, yes, good evening, Sir Randy. Good evening, good PM, ma'am. Ask ko lang po kung may group chat po kayo headed by Sir Nathan. If ever po na mayroon, is there... Sir, we do have our uh, group uh, chat po. So I can... Uh, Ando din naman si Sir Nathan eh. So I can add you po if ever uh, just message me po dito sa aking uh, Facebook na ipinost ko kanina, then I will add you na lang po. So, uh, pakilala lang po kayo na I'm Sir Randy. I am Randy. I wanted to uh, to participate or join the group chat. So, i-add ko naman po kayo. So, 6.02. So, by 6.10, mag-start na po tayo ng ating webinar. So, yun po. Welcome po, Sir Randy. May mentorship program po ba si Sir Nathan? Which regards po dito sa kanilang question sa mentorship program, it's much better if you will ask Sir Nathan uh, mamaya po para masagot niya po. Good evening, Sir Troy. Okay, we do have uh, 31 attendees na po. So, if ever na meron po sila, uh, you can copy the link po or you can send the link po of uh, our webinar sa mga friends nila or sa mga kakilala nilang gustong umaten po para yun po, maka-attend din po sila and sabay-sabay uh, po tayong matuto. Paad po sa group chat. Yes, sir. Uh, message nyo po ako sa aking Facebook. So, I posted it. Mag, ano na lang po kayo. Backread na lang po kayo ng bahagya dyan. So, message nyo na lang po ako. So, I can add you on our uh, on our group chat. By 6.05, I will start to... Uh, so, yun po... Uh, uh, with all due respect dun sa iba pong mga religion but we do start our webinars po uh, with a prayer and we do end it with a prayer. So by 6.05 po, later later, uh, mag-start na po ako ng prayer para makapag-proceed po tayo sa ating webinar. Sir Troy, paad na lang po ako sa aking uh, Facebook uh, na na-post ko dito kanina po. Message nyo na lang din po ako doon na, na you wanted na to be added on the group chat. Okay, Sir Nathan, start na po tayo ng prayer para maka, yes. Uh, yes po, makapag-proceed na po tayo sa uh, webinar. So, yan, with all due respect dun po sa mga ibang religion, but this is how we started our webinars and, and our webinars po. So, uh, I hope na yun po, makikooperate na lang po sila if ever, okay. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Uh, Father God, we thank you for giving another day uh, for us to be reunited po and uh, to uh, uh, and to learn something po, something that we can actually uh, uh, use po in our uh, trading. So we would like to thank uh, Sir Nathan uh, for giving us this uh, opportunity to learn. So uh, I do hope that uh, uh, 
you will enlighten our mind so uh, we can absorb all the the things or the 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 things that uh, Sir Nathan will tackle today. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Amen, Sir. Yan. Ayan, naka, ano ka na pala, Sir. Naka-send up pala yung ayan. So, Sir Nathan, I will give the floor to you na po. So, yun po. We can start our uh, webinar po. Okay Thank na, Sir? Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Miss Kat. Thank you, uh, then, Sir Nathan. Dating daw eh, pag may, may chat question, ikaw na muna mong mag-ano para tuloy-tuloy tayo. Yes, Sir Nathan. Uh, good evening to all the uh, participants for tonight's presentation. Ano? Um, if you've been following this uh, webinar, uh, a series of webinars by uh, TICMIL, um, by now you should know that uh, there are certain um, house rules that uh, we need to enforce para lahat makinabang no sa oras na ilalaan natin para dito no uh, the house rule is very simple if if there is something that you need to uh, to clarify or if there is something that you do not understand or may follow up question kayo do sa topic natin please do not hesitate to uh, ask them by typing your question to the chat board that we have. Um, Kat and I will stop and try to answer the question to the best of our ability. However, I would like to reiterate that let's stick to the topic on hand. Huwag naman po yung technical analysis na tayo tapos ang tatanungin ninyo eh, uh, something fundamental. So, medyo mawawala ho tayo sa ano and you might construe my action to be rude kasi hindi ko po sasagutin yun dahil wala po sa topic. Okay? So, without further ado, let us now start with our technical analysis. Um, last month, uh, last week, we had the opportunity to discuss to you the fundamental uh, aspect of... Um, analysis no market analysis and we also provided some insights on how it affects the uh, market kung na, nakinig kayo sa amin nung Thursday at saka nung Friday siguro nakita ninyo yung activity nung fundamental effects nung Thursday at saka nung Friday no so ngayon for tonight we will now be concentrating our efforts on technical analysis. Yung fundamental analysis, masarap gamitin yan kapag ang market trending. Kasi, biglang magte-trend. Bakit biglang nag-trend? Kasi, there is something fundamental that happened in the market. Di ba? Kagaya na lang nun ng farm payroll. Lumabas yung data nung 8.30, nagkaroon ng effect sa, sa world market. no? Now, what if the market is ranging lang. Eh, this happens 60% of the time. No? Pagka ganito naman, ang ginagawa ng mga traders na katulad ko, ginagamitan namin sila ng technical analysis kasi ranging market. Ano? A ranging market is what we call a quiet market. Aket ng konti, bababa ng konti. Aket ng konti, bababa ng konti. No? There's no definitive uh, trend for the market. Pero pag titignan mo siya sa chart, no? Let's say, Euro-Dollar, predominantly it's been going up. no, But it's just going up in a not trending manner. So might as well take advantage of the ranging market. So dito ngayon papasok yung tech, tinatawag natin na technical analysis. No? So let's define first what is technical analysis. Technical analysis is a discipline for forecasting the direction of prices through the study of past market data, primarily of price and of volume. In the stock market, we can uh, record no, the, the, the activity of the price movement and the activity of the volume. 
kasi alam naman natin no magla magre-release ng PLDT ng uh, this number of shares no so ibebenta yan ng mga brokers or bibili ng mga ibang mga investors so alam natin ang volume however in the forex market medyo mabigat bantayan yan kasi 20 unang una 24 hours ang movement pangalawa uh, lahat ng cash flows cash transactions um, pertaining to the forex market ay eh, kailangan recorded so medyo mabigat gawin yun so ang ginagawa natin no artificial na lang yung tinatawag na volume no so iyan ang diskarte natin sa technical analysis no it is a discipline for forecasting the direction of price through the study of past market data now in the mt4 or mt5 no maraming classing charts no but i will not discuss all of them like in the same manner with the rest of the uh, technical indicators available to you i will not bother you with all the details na isa-isa natin yun dahil eh baka may anak na may, baka, baka may asawa na kayo may apo na kayo hindi pa tayo tapos sa discussion no, no? so bits and pieces lang no now let's start off with the type of charts that uh, that are quite popular no, in the world market. No? Number one, the not so popular or yung pinaka basic is what we call the line chart. No? Yung line chart, pag binuksan mo yung MT4, may kita mo na dudun yung icon niya. No? And it will just be a single line reflecting most of the time the closing price of a particular period no since ako naka, naka ano ako dito sa h4 basically every 4 hours a new line will be added here so it will continue to go up and down no continue to list the lines no accordingly so pag minove naman natin sa 1 minute diyan ganun din no every minute there will be a new line the next is what we call the bar chart or more often not no it's referred to the open high low close bar chart no uh, the bar chart is consist uh, is consist of so many parameters no the high the low the opening and the closing so meron yan sa bawat bar Meron yang apat na yan. Yung opening, yung closing, yung high, at saka yung low. Uh, yes, Eduardo, you raised your hand. What's the question? Type, please type your uh, question. Okay. If you will notice, no, I am showing you two types of bar chart. One open low and closed high. This is colored green. The other one is uh, colored red. It opened high, nag-create ng low, nag-create ng high, and then it closed lower than the opening. So I colored it red. Unfortunately, kapag titignan natin siya sa MT4 natin, it's just one color. So hindi natin masyadong nakikita yung significance ng opening at saka ng closing. Importante po kasi yun kasi later on i will discuss no in in another type of chart no kung ano yung significance ng opening at ng closing at eto na nga po yun ang tinatawag na candlestick no a candlestick uh, candlesticks are formed using the open high low close of a particular time period no so, ito yung itsura ng uh, kandila. Kung nakakita na kayo ng kandila, di ba, meron siyang mitya or wick sa gitna. No? Uh, often times, yung kandila na alam natin, hindi natin nakikita yung mitya sa ilalim. Pero meron yun, no? ang gandulo yun. Pag tinunaw mo yung kandila, lalabas yung wick. No? So, ito yung itsura ng kandila na yan. No? The candlestick uh, chart 
were invented by the Japanese during the Shogun era. No? Um, they used the candlestick charting to record their uh, rice production. No? So alam nila every every month meron yung mga records ng rice production nila. So na na, na ano han nila yan, no? Nakikita na nakikita nila na kakapag-create sila ng 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 analysis using the candlestick do sa inimbento nilang bar chart, no? Kaya magandang gamitin ito. And in fact, majority of the the clients, the traders that I know, no, prefer the candlestick to the bar chart or even to the line chart, no? Dito sa PowerPoint uh, na pinapakita ko, no? Um, yung white nag-open sa baba at nag-close sa taas. Kaya kulay kan puti ang kanyang kandila, yung wax. Pero pag nag-open siya sa taas at nagsarado naman mas mababa sa opening, the system will automatically color the wax colored black. No? Depende yun sa inyong color preference. But in this case, it's white and black. No? Comparing that to the bar chart in the middle, hindi mo alam kung nag-open low and closed high or nag-open high and then close low, di ba? Kasi kailangan mo pantignan bawat particular bar. But in a candlestick, no? Doon sa pinak farthest right, no? Makikita mo mas maraming puti o, put, o itim, no? So, pag nakikita mo mas maraming puti, chances are the market is going up. Kasi nag-open low and then nag-close high. But if you see a lot of black, candlesticks, then the pressure is on a downtrend. So, ito yung kagandahan ng candlestick. And to uh, convert your, cand uh, your charts to uh, a candlestick, all you have to do is go to your MT4 or MT5 and then click on that icon and your chart will automatically be uh, posted in a candlestick format. Okay? Now, this is where it gets more interesting, no? But let us define how to analyze a candlestick bar, no? Let's first talk about the body or the wax, no? The body determines the pressure. So, kung open low, close high, or open high, close low, madidetermine yung pressure. Kanina lang, di ba, sinabi ko, the more black you see, the pressure is on a downtrend. The more white you see, the pressure is on the uptrend. So, it's either white or black. No? Pag mas madalas ka nakakita ng black, it's on a downtrend. Kapag mas madalas ka nakakita ng puti, it is on a, on an uptrend. No? So, iyan ang kagandahan ng ating candlestick analysis no now what is the significance of the week ito yung mitya merong mitya yan sa taas meron din yung mitya sa baba no now the shadow or the mitya determines the dominance ibig sabihin kung mas mataas yung upper shadow kaysa sa lower shadow mas dominante ang mga buyers nung particular time frame na yun. Ibig sabihin, mas maraming bumibili kesa sa nagbebenta. Ang kabaligtaran niyan, eh, kung mas mahaba ang lower shadow kesa sa upper shadow. Ibig sabihin nun, mas maraming nagbenta ng time frame na yun kesa sa nagbe nagbili. No? In any particular time frame, or let's say, let's talk about one hour from 6 pm to 7 pm today no ngayon around the world let's merong bumibili ng currency pair na yan may nagbebenta ng currency pair na yan they have their own reasons bakit sila bumibili bakit sila nagbebenta let's think of a local bank ano bang pinakamagandang local bank na pwede ko example bank of the philippine islands let's talk about the dollar against the peso Kunwari, bukas pa ang merkado natin ano, between 6 and 7 p.m. Lahat ng, mga, lahat ng BPI sa Pilipinas, 
meron yung depositor or meron yung client na nagdi-deposit ng ng dollar o nagwi-withdraw ng dollar or let's in layman's term na lang para simplihin natin pumupunta ang mga kliyente ng BPI para bumili ng dollar at para magbenta ng dollar they have their own reasons di ba now depending on the pressure do natin malalaman yan after 7 pm di ba pero let's talk about the shadows muna no? between 6 and 7 do natin ma-determine kung sino yung mas dominante yung bumibili ba so hahaba yung upper shadow o yung nagbebenta ba so hahaba mas hahaba yung lower shadow so Pag nakita natin yan, alam natin kung sino yung dominante ng particular time frame na yan. Because that will give us a, a guide on what to expect in the next time frame. Kaya importante sa isang uh, forex trader ang significance ng body at ng significance ng shadow. Okay? So, tandaan nyo po yan. No? Importante, importante po kasi yan. Now, in, in this next slide, we're now talking about the same thing, a bullish candle and a bearish candle. However, if you will notice, I changed the color. Instead of black and white, it's now green and pink. Yeah. Green signifies an increasing or bullish candle. Pink, a bearish candle. So, automatic, alam na natin, ano? Kung alin, kung saan nag-open at saan nag-close. Now, a bullish candle is basically a time frame where it started low, it opened low, nag-create ng high, nag-create ng low, and then at the end of the time frame, nag-close siya ng mas mataas sa opening. Yan yung tinatawag na increasing in volume. Ang bear naman, kabaliktaran lang. No? Nag-start ang time frame, merong opening price, nag-create ng high, nag-create ng low. Tapos, nung closing na ng time frame na yon nag-close siya much lower than the opening price. ba So, yan po yung tinatawag nating decreasing uh, candle no sorry na huli lang ah okay yon um i have a question para may points kayo kay Miss Ali at kay Miss Katrina bakit pagka decreasing bear ang representation at bakit kapag increasing a bull ang representation niya bull and bear Bakit? Bakit kaya? Bull pasugod. Tama. Tama si Luisito. ba ang bull kasi kung aatake, kung susuwag, siyempre, ituturo mo muna niya sa baba and then iaangat niya yung kanyang prey. ba Ang bear naman, so, normally kung umatake yan, nakatayo. Tatayo muna yan. Eh, ang mga bear, mga usually, mga 8, 9, 10 feet yan eh. And then, dadambahin ka. No? So, yung claw niya, yung claws niya, left and right, yan yung pang a niya, itataas muna niya yan, and then it will attack you by going down. No? So, yan po ang berries. So, yan po yung significance niyan. No? Kung bakit bull at bakit uh, bear. Uh, Miss, Mr. M Roland, ano po yung mabagal? Ayan. So, moving next. Ayun, meron ng mga points. Alin po yung mabagal, uh, Roland? Anyway. Hello. Hello, Roland. You can type po yung kanilang question po ng mas accurate po kasi hindi po namin alam kung anong mabagal. Oh. Dito, points ulit. 
Kita nyo, no? Iba na yung, ano, hindi black and white kung hindi red and green. My question here is, ano ang appreciating or increasing? Is it the black or is it the green? Increasing in ano, black or green? Ah, red or green? Miss Kat, ang daming, ang daming sumagot. Ayan. Appreciating yung green. Tama, tama. So alam nyo kaagad, di ba? No? By looking at the candlestick lang na determine na ninyo kung saan ang, ang bias ng market. Nung particular time frame na yan. No? This is daily. So every day, ang pressure is going up. Diba? By looking at the candle body. It's either red. In this case, it's decreasing or green. Increasing. So, sir, alam natin sir, kagad. Sir, ito yung sabi ni Rolden. Sir, nalito ako sa stocks about bearish. Sorry. Uh, okay. Ayun. So, moving on. Paano naman kung kunwari ganito ang itsura ng chart natin? No? Yung opening at saka closing, iisa presyo. Kung baga, nag-open siya, tapos nag-create ng high, nag-create ng low, tapos nung nag-close, same price ng opening. Pag ganyan na nangyayari, no? pagka meron kayo nakikita ganyan sa chart nyo, this is what we call the dojis. No? A doji is market uncertainty. No? Pag nakakita ka ng doji, there is no real body. The same opening and closing price, no? The, the, they have the same and uh they, they have the same opening and closing price, no? When you see this, ito yung warning ko lang, no? Do not do anything for that particular periodicity, no? Yan. Maraming types ng doji, but whatever the the, the doji is, it's still the same. Wag ka, wag ka munang mag-trade. No? Doon ka na sa wait for two time frames and then you enter the trade again. So, uh, can, can I share my MT4? Can you see my MT4? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay. In this time frame, bilangin natin ang dojis. Ilan ang nakikita ninyong dojis? Ano yan? Uh, point system yan. Meron ba kayo nakikita ang doji? Uh, sabi ni Marco, sabi ni Grace, Merceline, tatlo, dalawa, merong may apat. Hmm. Ayun. So, at least na-identify na ninyo. Question. Next question. Alin dyan yung up increasing na or bullish na candle? Is it the black or the white? Bullish, ha? Tama si Francis. It's the black. Yan. So, na-define na ninyo kagad, di ba? Kung ano yung tamang galaw natin. O, tama, Marco. Black. O, tignan muna rin ang ano yan. Tignan, i-check mo lang muna. And then, ayun. Di ba? Tirahin na natin ng trading. Okay, so let's move to uh, Kat, what do you see? Sir, your chart. My chart? Oh, bakit hindi siya nag, nag change Yan. 
Yan po, sir. It's okay na po. So, alam na natin yung mga different types of charts. Now, let's now dive into a better understanding of technical analysis. No? Ito yung pinaka-basic uh, um, paraan, no? basic uh, parameter that we need to fully understand before we dive into those technical indicators. No? Let's first talk about chart patterns. And in order to identify different chart part patterns, we need to understand these two words carefully. And these two words are support and resistance. No? Okay, let's define this. No? Support and resistance are levels where price will potentially stall and sometimes even reverse. No? Okay, let's talk first about the support. Support is a price level at which demand is thought to be strong enough to prevent the price from declining further. Logic dictates that as the price declines toward the support line and gets cheaper, buyers become more inclined to buy and sellers become less inclined to sell. By the time the price reaches the support level, it is believed that demand will overcome supply and prevent the price from falling further. So basically, the support is what we call the floor. No? Tuwing pupunta yung presyo doon sa floor or sa support, it is being resisted. Kung baga, lahat ng mga traders around the world, they understand that that particular price is a support price na. So, humihina ang mga buyers dyan. No? Di ba nakalagay? Uh, buyers become more inclined to buy. Ah, sorry. No? Lumalakas ang, ang aggressiveness ng buyers kesa sa sellers. Kasi alam nila na andyan na yung pinakalo niyan, yung, yung sahig. Ayun. Tuwing pupunta yung sahig, uh, yung presyo sa sahig, nagiging agresibo yung mga buyers. Let's take the case of the dollar and the peso. Over the recent month, no, tuwing akit ng 55 yan, muntik mag 50 na, muntik mag 60, pero hindi naman umano. No? Pero on average, the price of the dollar peso is between 55 and 50. So tuwing bababa ng 50, kunwari 51.20 ngayon, naging 50.80, naging 50.50. No? Nagiging agresibo yung mga buyers kasi Alam nila na tuwing malapit na sa 50, nasasagad na yan. Ito na yung pinakasagad, pinaka-floor. So, they become more aggressive in buying the dollar. Bibili nila yung dollar between 50.50 and 50. Maganda yun. Mas maganda pag nakuha nila ng, ng 50. So, yan yung tinatawag natin na sahig or floor. Or better known in the Forex market as the support. No? And now let's talk about resistance. Resistance, baliktad lang ito ng support. No? Resistance is the price level at which selling is thought to be strong enough to prevent the price from rising further. Logic dictates that as the price advances towards the resistance, sellers become more inclined to sell than buyers. By the time the, the, the price reaches the resistance level, it is believed that supply will overcome demand and prevent the price from rising above the resistance line. Okay. Now, the resistance is what we call the ceiling or the kisame. Diba? Doing aakit yung preso dun sa level ng kisame, medyo alam na natin na mataas na yan, sobra taas na yan. Maganda ng ibenta. So let's talk about the Philippine peso and the dollar again. Tuwing pumuputa sa 55 yan, maraming mas gugustuhin ko magbenta ng dollar kaysa bumili, di ba? So kung ako ganun ang mag-isip, lahat ng mga nagtitrade, alam na yung resistance level is around 55, magbebentahan sila kahit hindi nila kailangan. Do you follow? 
So ito yung nangyayari sa resistance. Kung ilalapit doon yung presyo, saka sila gagalaw ngayon. Hindi sila buyer kanina, pero since nasa 55, kahit hindi nila alam, kahit hindi nila kailangan, binibenta nila yung dollar kasi alam nila, bababayan sa 50. Do follow? So, maganda na nangyayari na bibili sila ng presyo na yun kesa magbenta. Ayan. Anon, anonymous tray uh, attendee are uh, there copy trading and social trading on tick mill. Mamaya na po natin sagutin yan dahil kasi hindi po yan yung topic. Okay. Ito po yung itsura ng ating chart. We're looking at the Swiss franc on, on a weekly basis. And I have created two yellow lines. One is the resistance line, the one on top. The other one is the support, which is the one at the bottom. If you will notice, parang this is a ranging market. Walang definitive trend yung, yung Swiss franc dito. Akit ng konti, bababa ng konti. Akit ng konti, bababa ng konti. What I'm trying to say is, on this particular period, no, the the franc has been ranging between the support and the resistance. So, ako, as a trader, tuwing lalapit sa support yan, bibili ako. Tuwing lalapit sa resistance yan, magbebenta ako. Diba? Tama Raymond, nagko-consolidate lang siya. Uh, it's not actually consolidating kasi kapag consolidating nagiging isang preso. Pero ito, no, akit ng konti, bababa ng konti, akit ng konti, bababa ng konti, no? So, it's the 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 activity is ranging, no? Uh, yung galaw niya, ranging market lang. So, might as well take advantage of it, no? How do I take advantage of it? By creating resistance and support levels. Why do I need to create a resistance and a support level? Simply because I need to know when to buy and when to sell the Swiss franc. Diba? When will I buy? When it's near my support. When will I sell? When it is near my resistance. Very simple logic. No? So ito po yung tinatawag na analysis ng trend, using trend lines, no? which is the support and resistance. Gets na? Okay, moving. There's another question. Wait lang po. Ito uh, po yung, uh, Coach, iba po ba yung raging sa consolidating? Uh, they can be used in the same definition. No? Uh, raging and consolidating can be used uh, in the same uh, meaning. Uh, Ito po, in a way, ranging po, sideways. sideways. Yes. Yan, okay. Mer meron pa ba? Wala na. Na, okay. na. Wala na po, sir. Okay. Now, let's now talk about general trend lines. Ito, marami nagkakamali dito. To be honest, nagtataka ako bakit nagkakamali sila dito sa sa ano nito, pagka, paggamit, no? Um... But basically, please, no, since uh, you're attending this webinar, uh, you want to gain more knowledge in um, trading, particularly uh, technical analysis, no, itong topic na to, I'd like you to follow this very, very simple uh, logic lang, no. Uh, wag naman ninyo sanang biguin yung tinuturo natin no? kasi dito ay importante para kumita kayo maganda para maganda yung nagiging outcome ng inyong trading now let's now talk about general trend lines uh, trend line analysis is built on the assumption that price will trend no sa future magte-trend yan kaya nga tinawag na trend lines no trend lines are an important tool in technical analysis for both Trend identification and confirmation. No? A trend line is a straight line that connects two or more price points and it extends into the future to act as a line of support or a line of resistance. 
this is where it gets tricky. When do you use the support and when do you use extensively the resistance? No? Ayan. I use support trend lines extensively when the trend is on an uptrend. And I use the resistance extensively when the trend is on a downtrend. Let's uh, discuss this further. No? Uptrend line. Muna tayo. An uptrend line has a positive slope. Paakyat. And is formed by connecting two or more low points. Yan ang ano dyan, Keyword dyan. Low points. The second low must be higher than the first low to have a positive slope. Uptrend lines. No? Or positive slopes act as a support and indicate that net demand is increasing even as the price rises. A rising price combined with increasing demand is very bullish and shows strong determination on the part of the buyers. As long as the price remains above the trend line, the uptrend is considered solid and intact. Ito yung example niya, no? Yung OCN na chart. Nakikita ninyo dito sa point na to, the the second the second low must be higher than the first low to create a positive slope that will extend into the future. So this is a ri rising trend line. And if you notice, my emphasis is on the support, not on the resistance. However, I can also create a resistance here, di ba? By creating a line from here to there. But if you will notice, since this is an uptrend line, I will never start my trade with a sell, but always with a buy. I will only buy when the price is near my trend line. What is my trend line? Support ba or resistance? Points po ninyo. Support. Tama. Yes. Thank you, Grace. Lenny. Oh, support. So, kahit umakit na yan, o nag-break pa yan do sa, sa line ko ng resistance, I will still not enter a trade. I will only enter a trade when it is near my support. So, in this case, I will enter a trade by here, liquidate somewhere here, buy again here and then liquidate somewhere here diba and then since the create ng near resist support level ko buy ako uli and then create a new resistance line na dito so nakailang buy ako diyan and then syempre natural na liquidate ko yan no i'm talking about the ocn at, at this particular time frame so every hour i will just monitor this and then check if it has reached or become close to my support, and then I will enter a buy order. There is a question. Support, ayun. Thank you, Alvin. So support, John. Okay? So, pag nakakita kayo ng uptrend line, you create, you don't, you don't put emphasis on the resistance. You put emphasis on the support. And, Never enter a trade with a sell. Kasi nga, uptrend na yun. Tapos ikaw, nakasell. Di ba? Parang ang layo nung, nung logic yan. But however, if you want to sell, go ahead. I'm not going to stop you. Basta ang sa akin lang, if I see a chart, I create my trend lines accordingly. If the, the chart is on a positive slope, then my emphasis is on the support. If my trend line is on a negative slope, my emphasis will be on the resistance. Ganun lang kasimple. No? Against the trend, if you sell, very risky. Tama si Alvin. Yes, yes. Tama yun. No? Pero I'm not going to stop you. Eh. Kung yun ang trip mo eh, di ba? Now, moving forward. Ito example ng uptrend line. No? Doon sa 2, nung nakita ko yung 2, nakapag-create na ako ng positive 
trend line. ba? Diba? So, kailan ako nakapag-start bumili rito no, sa AMC Corporation? I was only able to enter the trade when it reached the tree. Of course, I can create a resistance here, di ba? So, I can create my exit, uh, exit uh, trade. And since this is a new, a positive slope, no? at medyo tumalun yung trend line, then I can create my new trend line here. no? So, that's between 3 and number 4. Yung, yung unang baba nung, nung price, no? somewhere around 25. Kailan ako makaka-enter ng market? Nung second na, which is around 30. And then I will continue to hold on to the buy until it reaches my resistance. That's the time I sell by closing my, my buy order. Continue to do so until magbago yung trend. Diba? Ang simple. Dito nagkakamali yung mga iba kong mga kaibigan. Kasi pag nakita nila, tapos gagawa rin sila ng resistance, Tapos, oh, kasi, bakit sila gumawa ng resista? Kasi they are tempting, attempting to to enter a trade even if it is on an upslope. So, uy, nasa taas na, sell na ako kasi para pag bumaba, ibabay ba ko na lang. Which is wrong. In this case, always be a perennial buyer. Okay? So, to create a trend line, all you need to do is Go to your MT4 and then click on this icon. Lalabas naman eh, trend line. No? So since itong chart ko, positive slope siya, then I will create a support no? using the first, the second low is higher than the first low. So nakakreate ako ng trend line ko that goes into the future. So, every time na lalapit ang price dyan sa aking support, bibili ako ng pound dollar at ibibenta ko siya kapag malapit na sa resistance. So, in this case, I will always start my my order with a buy. Not a sell, but always with a buy. Do you follow? Ibahin na natin. Balik ka rin na natin ngayon. Downward naman ngayon, no? Ngayon, napakasimple. Binaligtad lang natin yung ating uh, definition ng trend line. No? A downtrend line will automatically have a negative slope and is formed by connecting two or more, in this case, high points na. Kanina, low points. Ngayon, high points na. The second high must be lower than the first for the line to have a negative slope. Downtrend lines act as resistance and indicate that net supply is increasing even as the price declines. A declining price combined with increasing supply is very bearish and shows that strong resolve of that of the sellers. Mas malakas ang sellers, mas malakas ang loob nila. No? As long as the, the price remains below the trend line, it is solid and intact. Of course, a break of that no, can indicate that net supply is decreasing and that there is a possibility of a price change. Yeah. No? Uh, pass ko lang kayo. May question, a uh, chat. Yes, 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 yes po. Okay. Hmm. So, kabalik na rin, ha? Ito, example niya. Yung second high must be lower than the first high to create a negative or falling slope. And then, a break of that line indicates that the net supply is decreasing and that a change of trend could be imminent. So, ito, example. Amazon. Siyempre, na-create ko to nung nasa 2 na ako, nung number 2. I was able to create a negative slope or a down slope by connecting the second low at the second high to that of the first high, yung number 1. And then, syempre, wala pa ako sa market. 
I will only be able to enter the market when it has reached the number three part. Tapos, siyempre, ibebenta ko yun. Diba? Nabenta ko siguro nung bandang April na. Di wala ako sa market. Siyempre, hindi naman ako bibili. Kasi baka mamaya niya ni bumagsak pa ulit. I will only enter a sell nung number four. Diba? And then, wait for the price to reach my support. So, bandang October, I bought it back. And then, sometime here, oops, sorry. Banda rito, nag-sell ako dapat, di ba? Kasi tumama doon sa resistance ko. However, nung pagka-sell ko, eh, hindi na siya bumaba. Ang ginawa niya, nag-continue na siya pataas. So, anong gagawin ko doon sa sell ko? I will close that. Pwedeng at a loss, pwedeng break even. Or pwedeng baka makachupita ako ng kakonti-konti. No? And then I will reassess the market. Do you follow? So ito may trend reversal na. Kanina downtrend eh. Pero ngayon, no? uptrend na siya. I can create now uh, an upslope trend line by connecting the second low being higher than the first low yung October so between July makakapag-create na ako dito ng aking up slope or support so dito sa so part na to nakakapag-create na ako niyan and then i will wait for the price to come near between 10 and 20 so somewhere around 18 for example and then enter a buy Kanina, couple of time frames ago, I was a perennial seller. Pero now that the trend has reversed, I am now a buyer. And I will continue to buy Amazon until magkaroon ng trend reversal. Okay? Yan. Ito yung example ng downslope sa H4 ng dollar Francs. So I will. I was able to create a downslope extending into the future, iba. So wala masadong activity jan. I will wait for this price to reach my resistance and then enter a sell or bear. Okay. Moving on. Let us now concentrate our efforts to a new topic. Sana klaro po yung trend lines natin, no? Yung negative slope at saka positive slope. Importante po kasi yan, no? Diyan lang, no? Pwede ka nang makapag-create ng inyong successful trades, no? Wala nang masyadong, huwag niyo pahirapan ang sarili ninyo. No, huwag niyo nang masyadong pagtatatanungin yung um, isip ninyo kung ano ba ang gagawin ninyo. Maganda bang gamitin itong trend line na to o indicator na ito? No? Make trading a very happy, fun way to make money by using the trend lines. Pero kung gusto nyo ng mas complicated, ito na tayo. Dito na tayo ngayon sa next topic, which is now technical indicators. If you open up your uh, MT4 or MT5 and then you go to the indicators list, you will have about 100 indicators that is available to you. We will not discuss all of them here kasi mauubos yung oras natin. No? Baka may mga po na kayo eh, hindi pa tayo tapos mag-discuss dyan dahil kasi maraming interpretations minsan dyan eh. Yan ang problema sa technical indicator kasi uh, since we're dealing with math, no, we're dealing with statistics, yung iba kinakalikot nila yung, yung stats to suit their need. So sa akin, I will only discuss uh, a few technical indicators that does not require you to mix and match the, the parameters. However, uh, I'm not limiting you if you want to use different 
indicators, by all means, no? gamitin ninyo. Yan. I-define ko muna ang technical indicator. A technical indicator is a result of a mathematical calculation based on the indications of price and of volume. Again, the volume here is artificial. The values obtained are used to forecast probable price changes. Ito yung keyword dyan. Probable price changes. No? There are many indicators that are already developed. No? Some were invented during the 30s, during the 20s, no? uh, during the Shogun era, yung, yung, yung candlestick. No? But however, no, I'd like you to look into the indicators available to you. Check nyo. Baka magustuhan ninyo eh. No? Ito muna yung umpisaan lang natin. No? Yung mga popular. Yung mga sikat. Yan. Uh, ayun. To go to the indicators, you go to insert and then go to indicators and then it will show you several no indicators. Um, can, uh, can you excuse me for two minutes? Two minutes lang po. Sandali lang. Sorry, sorry. Two minutes. Sir Nathan, nakamute po kayo, sir. Kat, mag-excuse siya ng two minutes. Wait lang natin. Ah, okay. Sorry, uh, my daughter wanted my attention. Yung pala may papipirmahan lang para sa school. <laughs> uh, sana ako, okay. Stochastics muna tayo, no? Can everyone hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay, stochastic is a technical indicator that compares where the securities, the uh, price close relative to its price range over a given period of time, no? So stochastic, there are basically two lines, no? One is the solid line, which is the percent K, and the perforated, which is the moving average of the percent K or just the perforated line. No? Uh, we call it the percent D line. Ang itsura niyan ay... Teka lang, may chat. Okay. Ang itsura niyan ay ganito. Diba? Meron siyang solid line at meron siyang perforated line. Now, the values of the stochastic is between 0 and 100. No? And then, meron dalawang demarcation lines that you need to uh, closely monitor. This is the 20% and the 80%. What it basically means is that if the line, no, the percent K line, no, falls below 20 and then breaks back up, it is a signal for you to buy. And then you hold on to the buy until it reaches 80 and then, siyempre, mag-hover above 80. At pag nag-break ng 80, that's the time you sell. So, yun ang paggamit ng stochastic. So, huwag na tayo mag-analyze ano mag -analyze ng market. Babantayan na lang natin yung stochastic oscillator. And to do that, no, eh, batayan lang natin siya umakit ng 20 or bumagsak ng 80. Pag nag-break siya ng 20, that's the time you buy. Pag nag-break siya ng 80, that's the time you sell. Okay? So, 
To use the stochastic oscillator, all you have to do is go to the indicator and then look for the stochastic indicator. And then what will happen is that it will add another chart no, to the screen. And then from there, it will tell you what to buy and uh, when to buy it and when to sell it. Let me uh, share you my MT4. And this is my MT4. Let's close the rest of the, the windows para ma-concentrate lang natin ang ating chart. No? Ayan. And then let's go to insert and then indicators. Look for the stochastic oscillator. Ayun po siya. Pag clinic natin, ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyong medyo magulo. No? Kinakalikot kasi ito ng mga traders. Pinapalitan nila yung percent K period at percent D period. No? And then they also change the slowing moving average of the oscillator. Pero for practical purposes, let's stick to this default parameters muna. No? So it should be uh, five periods for the percent K, three for the percent D, which is the moving average of percent K, and then slowing to be three. So, pag clinic ko itong okay, magkakaroon ng isang bagong chart sa ilalim. Ayun siya. So, if you're trading and using the stochastic, chances are, ganito itsura ng chart nyo. Halos hindi nyo na makita, makita yung candlestick kasi nagko-concentrate kayo sa inyong stochastic. Basically, what it means is that pag nag-break dito sa 20, this is the time you buy, wait for it to go up, and then breaks the 80. That's the time you liquidate your buying here by selling there. So open buy, you close your transaction by closing your sale here. So you're out of the market. Since you're out of the market and it's telling you to sell, and then you sell here. Diba? And then move on. So on and so forth. Buy and sell, buy and sell. Ganun lang po ang pag-analyze using stochastics. Wala nang iba. Simple lang, no? So, if you will notice, it gave you a signal to buy here. So dito, bumili ka. And it gave you a signal to sell here. So dito, nagbenta ka. Buy and sell. Here you buy. And then you sell. Here you buy. And then you sell. Here you buy. And then you sell here. Here you buy. And then you sell there. Ganun lang. So buy and sell, buy and sell lang. No? Hindi mo na tinitignan yung candlestick. Ang tinitignan mo itong stochastic mo. Pwede naman na rin natin yung gamitin sa one minute time frame. No? If you will notice, the same principle applies here. 80-20, the figures will be computed between 0 and 100. Yun lang. So 0, 100, 80-20, babatayan natin. A few minutes ago, it gave us a signal to buy here. So three, three time frames, nagbigay ng signal to buy. We will hold on to, to the buy until mag-break siya ng 80 at bumaba. Do you follow? Madali lang ba, Raymond, Lenny, intindihin ang stochastic oscillator? Madali lang, no? Sir, you make it sound so... It is simple because that's how you analyze it. No? Really, wag na na... Wag, wag, wag nyong i-complicate yung trading. Make it fun. Parati ko nga sinasabi, trabahong tamad eh. Kasi wala nang analysis, ranging market naman ito. Ganyan na lang itsura nyo. O, oh, ayan o. Oh. A couple of minutes ako, sinabi sa'yo, bumili ka na. E di bili tayo. Whatever the price, pindutin natin yung buy order dyan. And then kapag nag yung blue, nag-break sa 80, get ready to sell. At pag ito, nag-break pa baba, then that's the time you liquidate the buy order. 
E di you're out of the market. E mukha kang pera katulad ko. E di mag-sell ka ngayon. Kasi sinabi ng stochastic. Pagka nag-break below 80, you sell. Pag nag-break above 20, you buy. Di ba? May false alarm po minsan ng stochastic. Yes, marami. Ito yung false alarm niya. Uh, saan ba? Magandang example. Ito. Di ba? Order to sell. Bumaba. Pero hindi nag-break ng 20. Instead, umakit uli sa 80. Ito yung use nung unang break eh. Di ba nag-sell tayo dito? Di ba magbabay tayo kapag ganito yung itsura? Pero since umakit ng 80, kung ano yung binenta natin dito is i-buy back natin dyan. I-cut loss, kumbaga. Why? Because nas above 80 yung stochastic line eh. We will only sell once it breaks here. Di follow? So, sell tayo dyan. Dito, kinat loss natin yung sell natin. So, nag-sell tayo. Bumaba. Bumaba dyan. Tapos, nag-break ulit. That's the time we buy it back. Since wala na tayo sa market, bili tayo. Wait for this line to reach here. E eh, kaso hindi. Nag-break ulit sa baba. Then, that's the time you sell your buy here. So, you're out of the market. Wait for it to break the 20. In this time frame, in this period, you buy. Wait for it to reach. Then you sell here. You cut loss, you sell. You cut loss, you sell. You buy, you sell. You buy. You cut loss, you buy. So, ganun. Meron talagang nangyayari na false uh, Alarm. Hindi naman false alarm. Ang tawag namin dyan, ano, Marco, Wipso eh. Kasi sinabi sa atin mag-buy, pero kailangan ko palang mag-cut loss. Sinabi sa akin mag-sell, eh, yung pala kailangan ko i-buy back yung ano ko at a loss. So, Wipso ang tawag namin doon. Kung baga na naglalatigo ka, imbis na yung linalatigo mo yung, ano, no, yung, yung likod mo na nalatigo mo. Yun. So, Sir, may, uh, so we, so it is suitable ah. for ranging trade, sir. Sabi, so it Ay, oh, is suitable oh, for ranging nung... trade. I mean oh. ranging trend pala. Oh. Uh, Lenny, di ba kanina, nung start natin, di ba sinabi ko, uh, technical analysis is perfect in a ranging market. So this is suitable for a ranging market. Siyempre, useless ito kapag may mga fundamental data na lalabas. Di ba? Yon. So, ranging trend po. Yon. So, ito na. Di ba nag-buy tayo? Hintayin natin ito umakit. At mag-break pa baba. That is how you use the stochastic. Dali lang, di ba? Let's not complicate the whole adventure of trading. Actually, masarap nga mag-trade eh. Ako pa trading ninyo ng pera ninyo. Pag hindi kayo nawindang sa mga number, manner of trading na gagawin natin. Ayun. So, moving forward, nasa na ba yung aking uh, PowerPoint slideshow? Ayan. Ayun. Nakita nyo na, no? Paano ilabas yung stochastic. So, that is what it will look like. Now, huwag na yan. Another complication, mga divergence sa isang ano. Ito yung in-explain ko kanina. No? You buy when it breaks and then you sell when it breaks below. And then you buy back again. Ito example na ito, since merong nakalagay na dito na panibagong chart below, below 20, that's the time you liquidate your buy kasi mali na. Ayan. What do you mean by, Michael, what do you mean by minimum amount? Hey, hey, hey. Sir, baka yung What kaninang mean? sinabi nyo na ako patray din yun. <laughs> baka ah. yun. <laughs> Oo. Yes, meron kasi tayong manage account trading dito sa Tickmail. No? If you want, no, pwede naman po yun. Unfortunately, I'm not cheap. <laughs> My minimum startup capital should be 100,000 US. Unfair naman sa mga clients ko na nag-open ng 100 tapos pagbibigyan ko kayo 
Uh, sir, ako $100 lang or $1,000 lang. So let's be fair to everyone. Anyway, moving forward. Dapat na clear ko na to. Ayan. Next indicator that is very, very popular in the Forex market is the term Fibonacci. Uh, Fibonacci was invented by uh, none other than uh, a guy, a mathematician in the, during the Renaissance period. And his name is Leonardo Fibonacci. Si paring Leonardo, yung magawa sa buhay niya, ay eh, mahilig sa math. Hindi ang ginawa niya, nag, nag ano siya ng principle, no, na uh, simple addition. And then it will run in 2 millions na, no? So basically, ang, ang Fibonacci sequence is adding uh, it adding the numbers, the figures in sequence. Kunwari, 0 plus 0 is 0, di ba? Pero 0 plus 1 is 1 na. So 1 plus 1 is 2. So meron na tayong 2. So 1 plus 2 is 3. 2 plus 3 is 5. 3 plus 5 is 8. 5 plus 8 is 13. 8 plus 13 is 21. And so on and so forth. No? Patakbo into the millions. Now, as the, as the math progressed, we were able to find the golden ratio. Yung golden ratio is the relationship between the two numbers. No? between 13 and 21 and 21 and 34. Basically, the difference between 21 and 34 is always or almost near to 0.618. So, 0.618. So, dun sa 0.618, no, na-realize ng karamihang mathematician that it also happens in nature. If you look at your thumb, no, I'd like you to look at your right thumb no yung bali niyan is roughly about 61.8% from the joint from the first joint no so iyan it happens it's happening in nature yung bamboo kung nakakita na kayo ng bamboo di ba meron yan yung mga nodes na between them if you compute the 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 nodes between them no between the three nodes, you will notice that the the node in the middle is roughly about 0.618% of the three nodes. Pati po yung pusod ninyo. No? Pag kinumpit nyo yung total height nyo at yung pusod ninyo, no, yung relationship ng pusod ninyo sa total height nyo, that is roughly about 61.8% of your total height. So it ha it is happening in nature. So kumbaga parang uh, quick of accident yung pagkaka-discover ni Leonardo pero na-discover niya no accidentally yung golden ratio. Yung nangyayari sa bamboo, sa pine tree, sa sa sisel, yung tinatawag na Nautilus, no? Uh, in fact, um ginamit nila yung math no to create to forecast the perfect face. No? At yung lumabas nga na perfect face ay eh, talaga napaka-symmetric at maganda rin ang itsura. Although wala pang nakakakuha nun. No? Hindi pa pinapanganap. Pero marami nang malalapit. No? And if you will notice, ito yung, yung pandaya ng mga modeling agencies. Eh. Na, pag tinignan nila yung mukha, titignan nila yung 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 Fibonacci ratio ng mukha. And if it fits or is near that Fibonacci uh, figures, then they accept that, that model. Be it black, be it yellow, be, be it kayumangi or white. no, Yun. So, the Fibonacci is basically uh, used no, in this manner. Now, where does Fibonacci fit in in the Forex market? I think kagandahan kasi kapag Alam mo na yung computations na Fibonacci. You can create a Fibonacci sequence line. No? They will come out as trend lines. 
between the the two points that you will use, no, the high point and the low point. So, pag ginamit mo yan, makakapag-create ka na ng support and resistance. No? Fibonacci, Fibonacci retrace, retracements uses horizontal lines to indicate areas of support or resistance at the key Fibonacci levels be, before it continues in the original direction. These levels are created by drawing a trend line between two extreme points and then dividing the vertical distance between the Fibonacci ratios of 23.6, 38.2, 50%, 61.8%, and 100. So 0 to 100, meron niyang mga figures na yan. No? So ito yung itsura ng isang Fibonacci between these extreme points, between this low and this high, nag-create siya ng 61%, 50%, at 38.2%. Kabilig tara ng 61.8%. Tapos, gumawa uli dito ng Fibonacci retracement, no? Extreme low and the extreme high. So, nakapag-create ng Fibonacci lines dito. It will give you uh, a possibility, a possible support or a possible resistance depending on the trend of the market. Do you follow? Ayan. Fibonacci retracements are very popular by many technical indicators to help them identify strategic places for transactions to be placed. Target prices or stop losses. Yan. The notion of retracement is used in many indicators such as Tyrone, Gartley, Elliot, no, and many, many more. No? After a significant price movement up or down, the new support and resistance level are often up near those lines. Yan. So, May chat question, Miss uh, Kat? Wala naman, ano? To use the Fibonacci... Wala po, sir. Uh, ito yung icon niya, ano? Pag hinover me yung mouse doon, lalabas yung name nung icon na yan, and this is called the Fibonacci retracement. Let's use this on my MT4. Where is my MT4? Ayan. Ay, sorry. Bumalik tayo sa ating sharing. Where is my chart? Here. Sorry. Ayan. Delete ko na yung ano ko, ha? yung stochastic ko. Para malaki yung aking, oh, may nangyayari sa market. Bakit ganyan ang galaw? Ayan. What are the extreme points that I can see here? My extreme low is here. And then my extreme ra, uh, high is here. So to create a Fibonacci retracement, I look for the icon. And this is the, the Fibonacci retracement icon. I click on it. And if you will notice, nagbago yung aking mouse. So using the low extreme points. And then ayun na, oh, lumalaki. Umaabot. And then I will click on the create the high. No? If you will notice, meron mga lines na lumabas. No? Yung 23.6, 38.2, and the 61.8%. No? From 0 to 100. So nakagawa ako ng line na yan. No? It doesn't matter if this is 38.2 or this is 61. Pagbalik ta rin mo yan, this is now will be the 61.8% and this is the 38.2%. No, kumbaga parang binaligtad ko lang between 0 and 100, ginawa ko 100 to 0. Yun. Now, what is the significance of those lines? The, these lines, the yellow lines, no, will now act as your support or resistance. If you will notice, parang nagiging resist supported sila dito sa level na to, no, sa 23.6. And the ultimate resistance will be, of course, this level. 
So every time it gets near here, I will be buying. Pag nag-break yan, they sell na ako and then my target na will be the 38.2 and so on and so forth. No? So this will act as my support and resistance levels. Hindi na ako nag-isip. Basta ito na lang ginawa ko. Diba? Getting the two extreme points. What are the most extreme points? My lowest low and my highest of highs on an hourly basis. Kung ililipat natin siya sa daily, Siyempre, hindi naman yan yung computation na inano natin kasi yun yung pinaka-low lang. So, ang extreme ko na lang no, will be here to there. So, can I do that? Of course, I can. This is my extreme low. Extend it to my extreme high. That will extend in well into the future. Kaya lang, balik nag-freeze. Kaya lang. Yeah. Iuusog ko lang, ha? So, tayo mausog. Anyway, so, dyan na tayo. Pag binalik natin sa high, sa so one, one hour, makikita ko pa ba yung ginawa kong hindi. <laughs> sa daily. Ayun. Nasa H4 siya. You will notice meron pa akong mga additional lines di, na na-create dito. Bakit lumabas yan? Dahil kasi ginawa ko sa ginawa ko sa daily. Ayun. Okay? So this is how you use the Fibonacci sequence or the Fibonacci retracement lines. no? Ayan. Mahaba-habang ano yan, no? So, kung gusto ninyo, you go to hourly so that you will see the uh, lines and then you act accordingly. Pwede ba natin tignan sa 15 minutes? Lalabas pa rin ba yan? Siyempre, ayan. How about sa 5 minutes? Lumabas pa din. How about sa 1 minute? Ayun, lumabas pa din. Kailangan mo lang bantayan na mabuti kasi hindi mo nakikita lahat eh. Isa lang ang pre... So, uh, Fibonacci line na nakikita mo. Uh, John Paul, so meaning ko ba kapag Fibonacci ang ginamit, mas madami kang support and resistance, meaning makakapag in and out ka sa market ng mas madaming beses? Yes, in a way, John Paul, ganun ang interpretation nga niyan. No? Uh, there will be so many time opportunities for you to buy and sell kasi Diyan mo sila aanuhin eh. Iba base. Teka lang ha. At hindi ko maano yung mouse ko. Ayun. Sir, there's another question po. Paano po malalaman kung bababa na siya ng 38%, 50%, and 61% level? At right, pag nag-break siya ng mga levels na yun, then doon mo na malalaman na bumababa na siya. Kagaya nito, no? The chart that you're looking at, di ba? It is between 0 and 23.6. Pag nag-break siya ng 23.6, that, that 23.6 is now my resistance. And my target now is the 38.2. And then I will trade accordingly. Buy and sell, buy and sell. Buy ako pag 38.2. Sell ako pag malapit sa 23.6. I will continue to do so until it breaks those lines again. You follow? Ganun lang ang dapat nagagamit ninyo. Eh. Huwag nyo nang pahirapan sarili niyo. Another question, yeah. which time frame is best for Fibonacci? All time frames is based. You, you can use all time frames. If I go to one minute, I can create a Fibonacci line sequence here. Diba? Ayan no. Paano ko gagawin yung ano ko sa one minute? Ito yung activity ng Friday. Kung napanood ninyo yan, ang ganda no? Mahapdi sa mga iba kong kaibigan dahil kasi inanticipate nila yung market. Ayan. I was able to create a Fibonacci sequence on the one minute line. So now, it is between 23.6 and 50%. I can create buy orders near the 23 and then liquidate them near 15. Or if it breaks the 23.6, then that becomes my resistance and then my next support now is the 61.8. So yung kanong kanina sa akin, no? 
pag nag-create ako, will this be uh, opportunities for me to buy and sell? Yes, definitely. No? Ito lang gagamitin ninyo. Wala na kayong ibang gagamitin ng oscillators or indicators. Huwag na kayong gumamit ng trend lines. Pwede. Ito na mismo yung gagamitin nyo. The white line is between 23.6 and 50%. So if the white line is near my 50, I sell. If the white line comes near the 23.6, I buy. Buy and sell, buy and sell, buy and sell. Yun. And if you will notice, from this time frame all the way here, parang nagre-restrict lang siya doon sa mga lines na pinag-uusapan natin. Kagaya so, nito, no? Dalawang attempt siya mag-break ng 61.8 pero hindi niya nagawa. It got resist resisted at 50%. This one at 50%. This time frames at 50%, 50%, 50%. ba? Now it's between 50 and 26. So I will continue buying and selling no? accordingly. Buy ako 23.6, sell ako sa 50. Buy ako pag umabot sa 23.6, sell ako sa 50. And mind you, this is one minute. So every now and then, I get to liquidate my position. May question. What time frame po yes. ba dapat gamitin para mag-execute ng trade? Lahat ng time frames, Jimber. So, ano yung time frame na gusto mo? Yun ang gamitin mo. Okay. Moving on. I go to my PowerPoint slide. Ayan. So, any questions of Fibonacci? At this time, ganun din. No? Pero it's best use on trend line analysis. No? And anong icon niya? Ito. Yung may letter E. Lalabas yan sa inyong MT4. Bollinger Bands. No? This was uh, developed by John Bollinger in the 80s and it is used to identify the degree of real-time volatility for a particular pair. Traders keep close eye on the volatility because a sudden increase in volatility levels is often a prelude to a market trend reversal. Bollinger bands are placed over the price and is uh, consist of Moving average together with the upper and lower bands that define the channel of the chart. So, ito yung itsura ng Bollinger Band. No? Kung gagamitin natin siya sa ating chart, let me just first clean out my uh, chart. No? Sir, so, habang nag-clean ka ng chart, Ah, uh, eto is I think a personal. Ano po ang pinaka favorite na gamitin niyo, sir? Uh, anong favorite na gamitin? Sir, I think favorite na ano uh, po, na indicator. Apa uh, indicator? Or na I use I use Fibonacci. And then I use the MACD, I also use SAR. No. For uh, different reasons. I also use Bollinger Bands pero lesser degree. Ayan. Mahirap yung ano no kasi inaakit binababa ko yung zoom ano eh. Uh, I should buy a, another monitor para hindi na ako paikot-ikot. Ayan. Bollinger Bands can be found no on indicators under trend. Ayan. Again, yung parameters wag niyo na po galawin. It's always 22 and shift is 0. Pag-click ko ng OK, lalabas yung, yung bands doon mismo sa chart. Ayun. Kaya lang lahat sila color green. Wait. Properties natin. Palitan natin siya. Gawin natin siyang white. No, yellow. Para kitang-kita. Ayun. At lakihan natin ng konti. Yung itsura. Ayan. So, ganyan ang paggamit ng Bollinger Band. Tinitignan natin kung nagkakaroon ng break no? sa upper band at saka sa lower band. Pag nag-break sa upper band, 
indication na mas malakas ang market, no? Yung volatility niya is more on the uptrend. Pag yung lower band, volatility niya is on the downtrend naman. So, you act accordingly. Yun. Pero yung, ano yung tanong? Minimum amount, yes. Pero ang tanong ay kung ano ba yung ginagamit ko. Ito yung mga ginagamit ko, pero I'm not saying that you use them. Uh, let me uh, tell you muna kung bakit magkaiba tayo ng mga uh, reasons. No? Uh, think of it as uh, yung ating risk aversiveness. No? Yung risk parameters natin. Magkakaiba kasi tayo ng, ng character. No? I, I, I get asked this a lot. Even if uh, you ask me, Sally, halos lahat ng webinars ko para sa TICMIL, tinatanong ito eh, what indicators or what tools do you use for trading? Um, the simplest answer that I can give you is, gamitin po ninyo yung pinaka komportable ka yung indicator. Kasi magkaiba ho tayo ng, ng characteristics eh. Um, let's talk about ourselves, no? Yung ating pinaka character. The best example that I can use is driving, no? Um, if you look at EDSA, there are drivers that are aggressive and there are drivers that are defensive. Kasi magkakaiba sila ng number one, ng experience. Number two, no? Not necessarily for the experienced driver ka, like 20 years ka na ng Peter, eh, magaling ka mag-drive, mag, mag, mag no? Pangalawa, yung exposure mo, no? E eh, baka nasanay ka lang sa iskinita, eh, tapos bigla kang super highway o biglang autobahn, medyo mag, ma, nakakalito. So, there are so many reasons why people drive in different ways, no? Si Miss Sally, defensive driver yan, no? Nakita ko na po siya mag-drive. Si Kat, ganyan din. Ako po, pagka nagda-drive ako ng, ng car, no, ma, ma overprotective ako. I always look at all styles. Kasi kadalasan, kasama ko sa loob ng kotse, eh, yung pamilya ko. So, I'd rather side on the caution, no? So, defensive driver ako. Kayo, baka magaling kayo magmaneho. Uh, baka laking Formula One uh, uh, environment kayo. So, ganun kayo mag-drive. No? Uh, meron naman na defensive drivers. No? Meron din mga aggressive drivers. No? Talagang kahit gatiting ga, ga, na lang yung allowance, isisingit pa din, no? Tingnan niyo yung mga jeepney drivers natin, no? So, ganun din ako, no? I'm a defensive driver. However, I also like to use sports bike, no? And my wife always tell me kasi pag pinapanood niya yung mga mga rides ko, napapansin niya mabilis. Tapos there was a time na may meron akong picture na pinakita sa kanya. Eh, panay mura ang inabot ko. Dahil kasi nga, pinakita ko, uh, the speed was 289 kilometers per hour. So, talagang galit na galit. At tuwing maririnig niya paanda rin yung motor, nagagalit. No? But again, bakit ako ganun kagago magmaneo? Kasi, pagka nagkamali ako, hindi ko madagamay pamilya ko. So, in a way, I am a defensive and at the same time, an offensive driver. Now, let's talk about you. I don't know what your character is. Eh. Are you a defensive driver or are you an offensive driver or a combination of both? So, pagdating sa technical analysis, itong mga i-discuss ko, ito yung komportable ako. Kaya nga yung natatawa ko doon sa mga learn to trade or yung mga 
nag-a-analyze ng market para sa sa ibang brokers, no? Hindi ko na babanggitin yung sa XM, no? Tuturuan kayo nung kung ano yung ginagamit nila na indicator. Hindi eh, naman kayo magkapareho ng ugali. So, it may work for them, but it doesn't necessarily mean it will work for you. So, dun sa tanong na sa nakukomportable, ituturo ko sa inyo by all means. But I'm not going to tell you to use it exclusively. I would rather encourage you to experiment. Maggamitin ninyo yung mga iba-ibang mga indicators and then find your sweet spot. If you're comfortable with RSI, go ahead, use the RSI. If you're comfortable with the channels, go ahead, please. By all means, use the channels. If you're uh, comfortable with the uh, stochastic, gamitin nyo. Kung comfortable kayo sa alligator, please do so. No? Pero it will not uh, be just an instant uh, use. No? Kailangan pag-eksperimentohan nyo muna. Kailangan gagamitin nyo muna siya sa simulation. No? Magba-backtesting pa rin kayo. Ang ituturo ko dito, yung mga simple at saka kung ano nag-work sa akin. Unfair, baka sabihin nyo unfair naman kung ano lang yung ginagamit niya, yun ang gagamit, yun ang ituturo niya. Natural, kasi doon ako komportable. Eh ba't ko ituturo sa inyo yung Ichimoku Kinkuyo? Eh hindi naman ako komportable doon. Di ba? So, baka, baka magtanong kayo sa akin tungkol sa Ichimoku, eh hindi ko naman kayang sagutin dahil kasi hindi ko ginagamit. But itong mga indicators na ituturo ko sa inyo, ay lahat ng itanong ninyo eh masasagot ko naman no. I hope with 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 certain authenticity. 'Yon. So balik tayo. Hindi it doesn't necessarily mean my indicators will work for you, ha? So please use experiment and then find your sweet spot. May tanong sir, si John. Yes, yes sir. I will read na lang po. Sir, if beginning ka po ba okay lang po, ay okay lang na isang indicator lang muna ang gamit then like if what works best for you na indicator. Yes, Paul. John Paul, by all means, use them. Kasi, yun nga yung nag-work sa iyo eh. Diba yung kaninang tina, uh, minention ko. So, tingnan mo muna. No? Look for the indicator that you're comfortable with. Huwag yung pitsapilitan. Ayun mo sa learn to trade. Lahat ng mga tinuro nila, o oh, ito lang gamitin ninyo. O oh, tingnan mo, may nanalo na ba sa learn to trade? Wala. Kasi mabigat eh. Hindi hindi tugma yung kanilang uh, ana, yung kanilang use sa karakter mo. Yun. Next card. Meron pang isa po. Coach, paano pa ako makapag-trade kung ang gagawin ko ay ipa-plot ko siya sa extreme low then to the extreme high? Eh, that means tapos na po yung trend. Paano po ako makapag-buy or sell? About FIBO daw po yun, sir. Oh, uh, eh, di ba yung Fibonacci will give you support and resistance lines, yung mga yellow lines? Those will act as your entry and exit points. So, I don't understand your question na parang sasabihin mong tapos na. Hindi eh. Kasi maabot pa yan extending into the future. Okay? More questions po. Okay. Thank you. So, relative RSI tayo. Ganun din. Para rin siyang stochastic. Pero, imbis na dalawang linya siya, isa na lang. Isang line lang yan. So, ang itsura niya, ayun. No? Isang line. Pero, imbis na 80-20 yan, ang gamit niyan is 70-30. Yun. Pag nag-break sa 30, That's the time you buy, and then pag nag-break below 70, that's the time you sell. The same principle applies with the stochastic. Ang difference lang, 30-70 ang gamit natin instead of the 80-20. Ayan. Uh, oops, tumalo na ko ah. Bakit pending order na to? Ayan. Let's just uh, share you my uh, chart and then the next one the indicator that I will uh, discuss is what we call the parabolic SAR 
parabolic SAR, SAR stands for stop and reverse. No? The parameters will always be 0 0.02 and 0 0.2 maximum. No? The step will always be always ha, 0 0.02. Huwag niyo pong galawin yan. Kapag ginalaw niyo yan, hindi na po yan parabolic SAR. The, para, the parabolic SAR will be plotted on the chart itself. And they will be plotted as dots either above the candlestick or below the candlestick. So, ayun. Kung makikita ninyo, I'm looking at this per hour. One hour ago, no, two hours ago, the dots were below the candle. And then in this particular hour, between 7 and 8, the dot has now moved to the top of the candlestick. Basically, what it means is that if the dot is above you, it is a signal for you to sell. And then if the dot is below the candlestick, it is a signal for you to buy. Ganun lang kasimple ang understanding dyan. Liitan ko lang. At iusog ko. Ayan. Ito ang tanong nyo kanina o ano yung ginagamit ko. Ito ginagamit ko to extensively. No? Kapag OPM, itong SAR ang parati kong ginagamit. No? If you will notice ito, start tayo dito sa SAR na to. Itong time na yan, nung nag-move na sa next time frame, bumaligtad na yung dot. Kanina nasa ibaba, ngayon nasa taas na. So this was a signal for me to sell. And then sana stop and reverse ko, yung stop loss ko. Kung ano yung presyo nung dot, yun ang stop ko. Ang value na is 1.09084. I will continue to sell, pero if you will notice, nagbabago yung stop loss ko. Bumababa. Nag-sell ako dito, ano yung time frame, yung closing price niyan is 1.0937. Yun sa closing. Eh ano yung dot? 84. So, nung nasa 37, nagbenta ako ang stop loss ko, 9084. I will continue to sell until the dot tells me otherwise. So, nung time na to, pumaligtad na yung dot. Nasa ibaba na. So, this is now my liquidation nung sell ko dito. So I sold at 1.0937 and then I bought it back at 1.8905. Did I make money? Yes, I made money. Since wala ako sa market, nung time na to, it gave me a signal to buy. So I will buy here and then hold on. Kasi tingnan mo, nasa ilalim pa yung dot. I will continue holding on to the buy until the dot appears above the candlestick. Ganun lang kasimple. Trabang yung tamad. Diba? Sell. Buy. Ganun lang. One minute. Lagi natin sa five minutes. O, ayan no. Buy ako dito. Nag-sell ako dito. Nag-buy ako dyan. Nag-sell ako hanggang ngayon. Lagay natin sa one hour. Ganon din po siya. Buy, sell. Buy, sell. Ito yung WIPSO o yung false alarm na sinasabi kanina. Buy ako, sell ako dito. Ngayon, buy ako. This one is a different uh, a, new, a new bar. So now this is a Sell. My question, does the spacing of dots of the parabolic indicate slowing momentum? No, Alvin, it doesn't indicate anything. It just tells you to move your stop loss. Remember, let's go to let's go back to one minute. Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven minutes ago, it gave me a signal to sell, uh, to buy, sorry. No? Bilangin natin yung dots. 2, 4, 6. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. 
11 minutes ago, it gave me a signal to buy. So, nakabuy ako. Anong, no, 11 minutes ago, saan ako nag-buy? Closing ng price. Ay, hindi ko na makita bigla. Oh, I should have bought at 1.08905. The price now is 1.08986. So, I'm making good money here. Diba? I will continue to hold that buy until the chart tells me otherwise. Eh, since one minute ito, I will just look at it every minute. Diba? Hintayin ko lang yung dot maging ma-plot dito sa taas. And then kapag na-plot na siya dito sa taas, then that's the time I liquidate my buy. Saan ko binay yun? Yung 1.08905. Saan ko makikita yung 08905? Ayun o, oh, yung nandi dito. Tingnan nyo yung closing price dyan. Bakit ko yung ginagamit yung 08905? Kasi yun yung dot dito eh. Ayun o. Oh. Diba? So, hindi ko na tinitignan whether it's a bull candle or a, or a bear candle. Hindi ko na tinitignan yan kung doji. Hindi ko na tinitignan ang Bollinger Band. Hindi ko na rin tinitignan ang stochastic or ang RSI. Ano ang tinitignan ko? Yung dot. Did I plot my trend lines? No. So, yung question kanina, no? para sa newbie, Pwede kong magamitin isang indicator lang. By all means, gusto ko nga, ganun lang eh. Simple lang. Simplify your trading. If this works for you, then use it. Pero sa akin, bakit ko ginagamit yan extensively? Kasi madaling gamitin. Pag ang dot nasa taas, it's a sell signal. At kapag ang dot nasa baba, it's a buy signal. Nung time na to, nung 14, 15, 11 minutes ago, it gave me a signal to buy. Ano yung stop loss ko? E di tindigin ko lang yung dot. Tapos yun yung dot na yun, yun yung stop loss ko. Ayun, nabago ng dot. Lumabas yung dot dito. So, so now, this is my stop loss. Yung parabolic dot dito. Diba? Tingnan nyo, hindi na yan 11 dots. Kasi nagmo-move yung one minute. Yan. Sir, may At question po. Dapat po ba i-combine ang parabolic SAR sa Bollinger Band? Not really. It's just I forgot to liquid, uh, delete the the Bollinger. Eh, delete na natin para hindi magulo. Ayun. So all you see is the parabolic SAR. Ayan. Ilang, ano yan? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. O, 14 minutes na to. E, 11 minutes ago, di ba? It gave us a signal to buy. So, asa na stop loss natin? Itong SAR na to. Ano yung SAR value? 1.08864. That is the stop loss. Saan tayo bumili? 1.08905. Ayun, yung figure na yun. Yung sa close. Ngayon, ito na yung bago nating stop loss. 1.08966. So, hindi na sa stop loss, di ba? Profit na nga. Kung i-liquidate man natin yan. This is what I like about SAR. No? You will notice meron siyang tinatawag na mga false alarm yung whip so kanina no kasi tingnan niyo dito ti tatlong dots lang binalik sell kanina tapos nung time na to it gave us a signal to buy pero tatlong dots pa lang nag sell na uli so nagcut loss tayo diyan no so meaning may mga times na whip so or false alarm marami pero yung mga mga whip source niya o false alarm niya, kapag kinumpute natin, eh baka mamaya eh, break even or baka take profit o kaya maliit ang loss. Pero kapag tama siya, talagang tama siya. In, like in this case, no? Ang laki ng profit niyan. Ito din. Ito, profit na profit ito eh. Eh paano kung umakit pa ng tuloy-tuloy yan at yung that ay nasa ibaba pa rin. So, extending into the future, Aba, eh, wala na akong gagawin kundi hihintayin ko lang yung dot umakyat. Pag umakyat, then ililiquidate ko yung binili ko 14 minutes or 16 minutes ago. Ganun lang kasimple. So, let's say, 
No, between seven and eight, I have a free time, so much free time. Then this is how I'm going to trade it. In less than 15, 30 minutes, I, 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 I am already making money. Eh. So, hindi na natin pa, pa, pa i-complicate ang trading. Ganyan lang kasimple. So, si Jimber, ano pong indicator ang pwedeng itandem sa parabolic SAR para mas effective ang trading? The parabolic SAR is already a, a perfect uh, tool that you can use. No? Kung gusto mong i-complicate, hindi eh, dagdagan mo. Ayan, example. Nagbago na yung dot. Nasa taas na. So, yung binili natin, no, 15, 16 minutes ago, eh, ililiquidate na natin at a profit. And then, wala na tayo sa market. Now, since wala tayo sa market, gusto pa natin mag-trade. Then, we sell here. No, nung time na yan, and then, sana stop loss natin. Ayun, yung dot na yan, yan ang stop loss natin. Kaya nga tinawag na SL. O, second minute, ito na. O, continue holding on to the sell until gumaligtad siya uli. Gets nyo? Any more questions? None, sir. Wala. Okay. Ito. Kung gusto nyong gawin natin, lagyan pa natin siya ng ibang uh, indicators. Then let's use my favorite. Hinahanap ko nawawala eh. Ayun. This is my favorite also, no? MACD. Huwag niyo pong galawin yung parameters niya. It should always be 12 for the fast exponential moving average. And then it should be 9 for the uh, MACD uh, slow moving average. And 26 for the slow EMA, no? slow exponential moving average. At siya ay paglinabas, eh, different yung kanyang ano, uh, figure. Hindi siya line but histogram. And then the figure will always be between zero. No? So yung histogram is either negative or positive. No? Napakasimple yung gamitin ito. Kapag negative ang histogram, that's a signal for you to sell. Kapag nag-positive, that's a signal for you to buy. So yung tanong kanina, ano yung magandang tandem ng parabolic SAA? Ito, kung itatandem natin, medyo malikot yung MACD. Kasi dito pa lang, somewhere here, uh, pinare-reverse ka na. No? Dito ka pa lang pinabibili. Eh samantalang ito, yung SAR eh 16 minutes ago, sabi sa iyo bumili na eh dito sell pa eh. So medyo nagkakaroon ng ng hindi tandem yung kanilang indicator sa iyo, no? One is telling you to buy, the other one is telling you to sell. So mabigat, mahirap intindihin. Kaya nga sa akin, kung SAR, SAR. Kung MACD, MACD mas madali po pala sundan ang dot. Yes, Ronnie. Madali, di ba? Tama. Pwede yan lang ang gamitin mo sa pag-trade. Hindi mo naman kailangan gawing complicated eh. Yung mga so-called guru na mga nakikita natin, oh, yung mga nagpapabayad ng, ng mamahaling ano, sa, sa Facebook, no? Ako nagpapabayad din ako. Pero ang ituturo ko sa inyo, yung ganitong manner, I'm not going to in, in tell you no, not to use the rest o huwag niyong pakinggan si Nathan. Ito yung gamitin ninyo. No? Kasi gagamit, kung magpapaliwanag sila, they will try to complicate the matter para lalo kang ma mamangha sa kanilang uh, katalinuhan. ba? Eh, pero hindi naman kailangan ng ganun eh. Siyempre, para worth it, para sabihin nila, ay oo, worth it yung 50,000 pesos na bayad sa kanya. Kasi tinuruan tayo ng napaka-complicated na 
na methodology. So, sila yun. Ako hindi po ganun. Ayun. Uh, kaya lang po, di ko naman po nasubukan na, na sa buong buhay ko. Ang alin po ang hindi nyo nasubukan? Mas madali, pwede po na. Uh, Ronnie, medyo hindi ko na huli, naintindihan yung huli mong chat. No? Kaya lang po, di ko naman po nabu, na, ba, ba, basukbukan ang, sa buong buhay ko uh, ang pagtitrade. Well, this is why Tikmil is telling is teaching you how to trade properly the correct way. No? Huwag kang mag-alala. Tuturoan ka namin dito. No? We will teach you. In fact, if you if you attend my paid my paid uh, lectures, pakikita ko sa inyo yung mga losses ko kasi yun tandang-tanda ako. July 22 of 2011. Hindi ko pwedeng makalimutan 'yon. Yung mga profits ko, yung mga successful trades ko, hindi ko na naaalala 'yon. No? Pero dito, kung ka mag-alala, Ronnie, tuturuan ka namin. Yeah. Uh, this one, this 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 uh, webinar is free, no? May mga paid webinars kami, paid the seminars, pero extensive po 'yon. Talagang uh, meron tayong modules at saka syllabus na susundin. So if you will notice, no? Wala na tayong oras. We have three minutes left. If you will notice, ngayon lang nagbigay ng signal yung MACD to sell kasi negative na. Pero itong SAR, 2, 4, 6, 7 minutes ago, eh, pinagbebenta na tayo. Itong MACD, ngayon pa lang tayo pinagbebenta eh. So yung itatandem natin, medyo, di ba, medyo delayed. No? But here's how I use the, the, the indicators. If I am trading my money, siyempre I'd like to make less trades as much as possible. But I'd like to maximize my trades as much as possible. So in that in that uh, logic, I use MACD if I'm trading my money. Ayan, so if you're going to trade your own money, no, itong MACD gamitin nyo. Now, pag marunong na kayo mag-trade, darating yung time na magpapatrade sa inyo mga kaibigan nyo o mga kamag-anak ninyo. Uh, pag gano'n naman ang senaryo, kagaya sa akin, no, may mga nagpapatrade sa akin. Ang tawag ko sa mga gano'n, mga OPMs, no? Other people's money. Kapag OPM naman, ang ginagamit ko, MAC, uh, SAR. Bakit? Kasi, I make money from the transactions, per transaction, and I also make money from the profit that I generate. So, I make money for every transaction, and then I make money, profit or loss po yun. And then I also make money from the profit sharing. So, siyempre, pag MACD long term, pera ko. Pero kapag OPM, eh gusto kong i-maximize yung aking profitability, so I trade based on SAR kasi konting kibot ma pera di ba so ito sell buy sell buy sell buy sell ilang buy and sell na yun eh, if i'm charging let's say 10 dollars per trade oh edi ilang ilang dollars na yan pero kung gagamitin ko SAR aba eh buy sell buy sell buy sell and then buy ito sell So mas maraming galawang SAR kesa sa MACD, di ba? So ganito po ako mag-trade. But I'm not going to tell you to use this extensively. I'm just showing you what works for me. What will work for you, pwedeng ito. Pero pwede rin iba. Yun. So that concludes our session. Kita na lang tayo ulit next week at bukas for risk management naman. We will be discussing uh, risk management no? Tsaka how to set a trading plan. Okay? And I give you back uh, to Miss Tat. Yes, Grace. Thank you. Thank you so much. No? Sana may natutunan kayo. Um, yes, sir. Before we, yes, thank you. 
uh, advice lang po ako, short din tayo tomorrow. So instead of two hours, one hour lang po kasi may kasabay tayo sa Europe. So we will start oh. six to seven lang po tayo tomorrow. Sorry po. Okay. That's okay. Okay po. So you know po, uh, you know the drill guys. Uh, leave your emails address po for uh, recording. Hindi pa po ako nagsisend kasi inaantay ko po lahat na matapos para isang send lang po ako sa inyo. No? Para sabay-sabay lang po. So again, reminder, hindi po ako pwede mag-send ng, ng videos doon sa mga hindi pa naka-register meaning verified account. I-communicate lang po si Ma'am Kat para po doon sa ating ano, registration. Okay po? Don't forget to verify your account. Yes, verify the account po tayo ha. Thank you, thank you, Miss Kat. Thank, thank you very much, Sir Nathan. Close in prayers na tayo. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, let's uh, end the webinar with a short prayer. So uh, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Uh, dear Lord, thank you for the another day uh, na, na, na nabigyan po kami ulit ng bagong kaalaman sa aming uh, pag-trade. Sana po i-bless nyo po ang lahat ng tao na nag-share po or umatan po sa amin ngayon. And I do hope that all... Uh, all of us will uh, have a good health po. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. See you tomorrow, guys. Uh, thank you po sa lahat. Yes po. Pakiiwan na lang po lahat ng kanina.